Welcome back to Element 14 Presents. I'm Clem and I have this little plot of land, green summer, the summer of green tech. I should put some projects on there, but how to power them? I could use solar of course, but when there's bad weather, I would have no power. And I have a lot of bad weather, especially windy weather. So why not make a wind powered generator? And it should be small, so I don't need a permit and just power like small IoT stuff. Hmm, how hard could that be? When you need to power a project out in the field, then usually you have a few problems. Either your chosen source of power is not available, or you just are not allowed to use it there. Like for example, on my plot of land, I would need a permit for a solar installation. But it doesn't say anything about small-ish uh, wind generators. So I could use one of those. Maybe it doesn't even have to have a battery to run a microcontroller, we'll see about that. And then I could power little IoT projects out in the field without any of the restrictions that come with a big solar installation or a big generator. Okay, I want my generator to be cheap to build, resilient against weather, so I don't really want to make it sealed, but in case water gets in there it doesn't do any harm, it just can drip out basically and it should be mountable on a simple post that I put in the earth and it should deliver enough power to run a simple microcontroller because that is what I will mostly do with it or maybe it puts out enough power to charge a battery or keep it topped off at least. So we're trying to make a smallish generator with really simple components that everybody could build at home and then try out if we can generate enough power for that. How hard could it be? So a generator generates energy and a motor would use energy to make a kinetic movement, aka turning. And a generator is basically the opposite of that. So if we turn a generator, then it creates electricity. And technically, there's not much difference between a motor and a generator. They are just optimized for different purposes. Because when I move a coil of wire through a magnetic field, I induce a voltage into the lines. So even a motor like this, which is pretty specialized spapper motor, can induce voltages. You may know that as back EMF, when you push the axis of your motor. Uh, in the olden days with not so advanced stepper drivers and without any protection circuits, there was a high chance you can fry your 3D printer board if you just move it by hand. So uh, this is actually exact that phenomenon. And some motors are better for that purpose than others. Just to show that you can do it with pretty much every motor. This is a random motor from my junk drawer, two LEDs, and these caps are not used to like stabilize the voltage or charge. They only uh, catch the big voltage spikes so that the LEDs don't burn out instantly. So if I quickly turn the motor, then you can see the LED is flashing. It's always just one LED. If I turn it in the other direction, the other LED is flashing. That one seems to need a little bit more power. So this motor actually puts out DC when I turn it. It's just uh, in one direction, in one side, and in the other polarity when I turn it the other side. So in theory, we should be able to use a normal DC motor. A stepper motor, of course, would also work, but as you may have noticed when you tried to turn a stepper motor by hand before, these are a lot harder to turn. They have a lot more resistance in the turning. They would, in theory, deliver more current and more voltage when I turn them, but you need more power, more kinetic power to turn that. And with a wind generator, what I get is wind speed, but not so much force. If I would build a water generator, then I would get force, but not much speed like if I put it in a river or so. So where I want to place that, I don't have a river, but I have wind. So in that case, I need a motor that's easy to turn, but still puts out a decent amount of energy. So instead of testing a lot of different motors, I took a little shortcut. I got this one, which is a Maxon Amex 32, specifically because in a document by Maxon, that I got online, thanks to the Element 14 community for linking me to that one. Uh, there it says, motors you can use for generator purposes, and they list their range of motors uh, ranked 
for this purpose, which was really handy. And this one was in stock, so I chose it. It's a DC motor and it runs super smooth. You can, you can really tell this is a quality motor. Maybe you can even hear it's whirling. It's really nice. So that is a quality motor and it also uh, seems to put out a fairly large amount of voltage. It usually runs on 24 volts, but if you run this motor, you will notice that it also runs as low as 3 volts. Perfectly fine. It's just slower. Uh, it seems that a motor that can run smoothly with low up to high voltages through the whole range is advantageous if you want to use it as a generator. But that's just my observation. Don't quote me on that. Let's take a look into KiCad to see the circuit that I came up with for our generator. This is the schematic that I came up with in KiCad. It consists of a motor, this weird diode thing, then we have a lot of caps, and then we have a voltage regulator. That one is optional. Basically, if you have seen the previous demonstration, then you will notice that the motor will put out DC voltage in either direction when it's turned, but the polarity is changed. And we have to make sure that the polarity is always the same, no matter which way the motors turn. Because we can't really influence how the motor will behave. When the wind starts turning it, it will start turning it in one or the other direction. With our design, we may be able to mitigate that uh, mechanically, but I won't bet on that. And I think I will uh, want to make a windmill construction that works in both directions. So I use something that's called a full bridge rectifier. You may know that from the internet or from other applications. It is this diamond shaped diode construction that allows us to, no matter which way around the polarity is that comes in, it will always leave the circuit in the right direction. Usually this is used to rectify an AC voltage into DC. But in our case, we're not converting AC to DC. We're just taking DC and if it has the wrong pol uh, polarity, we switch it around and only let it exit the other way. And if it has the right polarity, we just let it go through. We basically use the full bridge rectifier only half of the time for a quarter of its purpose. Then it goes into the caps and that is basically to store energy that we've generated. Every turn of the motor will just um, make a little tiny amount of energy. And in the capacitors, it will build up and build up more and more until it comes to a usable amount. And the voltage regulator is basically in case the motor turns so fast that uh, the voltage is bigger than what our circuit that we would attach to it can withstand, then this would regulate it down. If your uh, circuit is not dependent on a particular voltage, you basically can omit that. But I wouldn't bet on that. And also we would have to look into low voltage applications because this will not generate a lot of voltage and it will not generate a lot of milliamps. Maybe enough to run a microcontroller. We will see about that. Now that we know the circuit is working, it's about the mechanical design of the generator. And I think I want to do a vertical generator just to make it as simple as possible and as sturdy as possible. Vertical generators have the ability to move wherever there is wind. It doesn't matter the direction they just turn. They are not as efficient as directional windmills that also have to swivel around in the wind depending on the direction of the wind, but they are easier to build, easier to maintain, and I think they would be a lot cheaper to make. So I'm coming up with a design in KiCad, oh no, in FreeCAD, for mechanical designs of course. So I've drawn up a lot of stuff in FreeCAD and I came up with a simple uh, generator build that would have used a gearbox. But it turns out that any reduction of a gearbox in this application is just too much force or friction for uh, being powered just with mediocre amounts of wind. So it wouldn't turn at all. That would be something that I could use for a water power generator when I put my generator in a river basically to get a lot of force to turn this motor with very high speeds but I don't have a lot of force so I need to make it direct driven so that plan got scrapped also it turns out that PETG uh, printed struts are not 
strong enough. I tried reprinting them in my Amex engineering resin, which was tough enough, but the overall design just wasn't what I was looking for. Also, I heard that style of design is pretty inefficient because it would basically, uh, it has to push away the air that is in front of every one of those shovels. And yeah, it's not as efficient. There are other designs that more look like spirals. Those look a lot more promising, so I'm gonna try one of those next. So I've printed my spiral design in black PDG and that didn't look really good, so I spray painted it in bright colors from red to orange to yellow, so it also looks cool when it's turning. And then I wanted to film like an initial demonstration, like blowing on it to see if it actually turns. and. Then it off camera fell down by trying to grab the camera to film it. So yeah, this is basically what remains. All broken pieces. Let's do a new design. And this time I want one that in case the storm rips it apart, I can easily rebuild it super cheap and fast. Behold my new design. This is basically two struts printed in super tough resin, a central axle, and these are sheets of polypropylene uh, and you just orient them in 90 degrees angles and then basically they form a spiral and if I just lock this spiral in place then I have something like a propeller shape that can be blown on in any direction so no matter which way the wind is coming it will always be able to turn all the electronics are inside here I've secured all the stuff together just with uh, rubber bands or basically this is a cut up bicycle in a tube and this will just uh, zip tie onto a post and then down here I can get out my voltage. So let's grab the generator, a multimeter and some stuff and let's try it out out in the field and see how much power we can generate. Yeah, okay, bad news folks, uh, there is absolutely no wind, not even a little bit, or like a tiny bit, but it's not enough to turn that thing. So, almost no wind. Uh, we have to make an alternative plan. Uh, I'll just turn this thing with my drill uh, at a reasonable speed that I expect the wind can turn it, if there is real wind, and we got some readings and make some max measurements as well to see how much energy potential is here. So. What could we power with a tiny generator like that? Okay, the results are in for our little generator. So, in a normal wind scenario that I think is feasible where it turns at like a speed like that constantly then we can usually get 20 to 30 milliamps continuously at about 1.8 volts which is barely enough to run one of the more powerful microcontrollers but it is plenty enough to run something like an 80 tiny or so so that is feasible if we get to max settings or basically max turning then we can draw up to 200 milliamps continuously out of there. So if we have a, like a lithium ion battery or something else that we can just use this generator to be topped off, we could run stuff like ESPs or any other Wi-Fi microcontroller on there. So this I think is feasible for two scenarios. Either use this as an animometer, which is a wind speed measurement device, uh, and let it pick up whenever there's speed and use that energy to top off a battery. Pretty cool. Or we can use this battery less just with a lot of caps to draw a very low current for a very low power microcontroller and let it do something purposefully on premise that doesn't need a lot of power, like log some data, for example, the wind speed. I think this is pretty handy, but I would like to make, I think uh, either 
uh, even more compact version and see if that also would make enough power or make a bigger version within the law that I can actually deploy uh, and see if that gives us enough power to run something like a Raspberry Pi, for example. So how hard could it be to make a tiny generator to power your projects? Turns out it is not that hard. The challenging thing is having the right project for it that uses the amount of power that this thing can deliver. For tiny microcontroller projects that can run on 1.8 volts, for example, with just 20 milliamps, it is completely feasible. If you want to run more power hungry applications, you would need to have a buffer battery and just keep it topped up with a generator like this or make a bigger one. The choice is yours. So I will give this an intermediate score while it's electronically pretty simple. All the mechanic implementation is rather complex. So intermediate project, but give it a go. And also what projects would you like to power remotely out in the field? What power source would you use for that? Solar, wind or water or something else I didn't even mention? Let me know on the Element 14 community. I gotta go, there's another project waiting for me.